And today I just wanted to run through what is an umbrella policy? What does it do? What does it cover? Um, so it's pretty simple. An umbrella kind of, you know, if it's raining outside, what do you need an umbrella? So what is an umbrella policy? It's basically a rainy day policy. Uh, very inexpensive coverage, um, but it does attach to a couple different things. So any cars that you would own, it's going to attach to those and give you additional coverage for bodily injury. Um, it's also going to be for homeowners on your personal liability. It'll attach there as well. You can also attach it to, uh, let's say, your if you have a motorcycle, ATV, um, motor home, all of those things can be attached to the umbrella policy. Or even if you have a renters, if you rent, uh, some people do, do need an umbrella policy, even though they might have a renters policy and don't own a home, but they have a lot of other things that they need to protect. So what the umbrella does is it, it pays out depending on what kind of coverage you have, whether it's a million to let's say 10 million in that range, it's going to pay on top of what what the underlying policy is. So underlying policy, what I'm referring to is your auto insurance, your motorcycle insurance, your home insurance. Those would all be considered your underlying policies. Now, every insurance company is going to be different on what their minimum requirements are on the underlying in order for an umbrella to kick in. So for example, you can't carry state minimum insurance and then attach an umbrella on top of that in order to save money, you have to have qualifying insurance. So for example, with farmers, the minimum requirement for the underlying insurance on when it comes to auto is gonna be 250,000 per person, 500,000 total incident for bodily injury. Uh, homeowners needs to be at a minimum of 300,000 um, on the personal liability side. And that's gonna stretch across, you know, if you have motorcycles, multiple homes, whatever it may be, those minimum requirements have to be met. Now, your insurance company, it may be a little bit different on what they require uh, for that underlying policy, um, but basically what the umbrella does, so for I'll give you an example. If we were in a car accident, we hit somebody, they got hurt. Let's say we had the 250,000 per person, 500,000 total incident. There was one person in the car and we only hit the one vehicle. The auto insurance is only going to pay up to the policy limit of $250,000. Now, if that person's hurt and their bills, and let's say they got a personal injury attorney lawyer and their bills exceed that $250,000, once the auto insurance is done at, at the policy limit, it's done. It's not going to be, well, we're going to sit here and pay out an extra $85,000 because we like you. You didn't pay for that coverage. Therefore, that's where the umbrella would kick in. So for example, um, if somebody got hurt, their total bills and lawyer fees came up to 450,000. We had the 250,000 per person. So there's additional 200,000 that the umbrella policy would pay out. Also, it's gonna pay out, for example, so let's say you had kids uh, or teenage drivers that were driving. That's a definitely a big way for you know, if they hit, hurt, hurt somebody, they're going to be covered under that. It's going to cover everybody in the household that is a, dri you know, a driver, uh, you know, driving age that's covered on their, uh, their auto insurance or they would be considered in household on your homeowners. So that's what an umbrella policy does. It kicks in excess coverage in case we go past the policy limits, uh, but it does have a policy limit as well. So if you're, you know, if we go through an asset assessment of, you know, what you own, whether it's the houses or the cars or, you know, how much money you make per year, things of that nature, you're going to want to make sure you have the correct umbrella coverage. A lot of people think a million dollars is it. It's not. We have a lot of people that have more assets than what that million is, especially when you start throwing in gross annual income, investments, things of that nature. So they might need two, three, four, five million or plus, you know. So for example, if you hit that one person again, their bills came to $1.8 million. You only had a million dollar umbrella. You are on the hook for the, the difference between that 1.25 and the 1.8. Now with farmers, we will provide an attorney for you at no cost up to the policy limits. Once it does go past the policy limits, then you are required. You, you definitely want to get your own attorney, but we can only provide attorney up to those policy limits. We can't make decisions for you. Um, 
as your attorney basically when it's going past our threshold to pay. And that's going to be the same. The, the, the attorney might not be free at some of the others, but same type of thing. They're going to want you to get an attorney if you go well past the policy limit. Um, so if you, for example, you own a few houses outright or maybe even one house, you have a couple cars, you own those outright, you know, you make six figures plus a year, you know, you definitely want to make sure you're looking at an umbrella policy because by the time you run through your asset assessment, you're going to be well over what your auto insurance limits would pay and you're going to want to make sure you're covered. I understand nobody wants to pay additional for insurance. I, you know, I understand that completely, but would you rather have a bad day when you got a few hundred dollar per year bill or would you rather, you know, if something did horrible happen, all of a sudden now you owe half a million dollars? Well, most people obviously would rather pay the few hundred dollars per year um, and make sure that the insurance pays that rather than themselves. So I did want to thank you for joining me on this episode of Doing Insurance Right, going over the umbrella insurance. If you have any questions, you can always feel free to call, email us at the or call or email us at the office. And as always, if you could rate, review, or subscribe to whatever great platform you're listening on, whether it be Apple, Google, uh, iHeartRadio, Sketcher, Spotify, all the great ones out there, I greatly appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.